After watching this video, you should have a fundamental understanding of how the simulated photoelectron spectrum of an atom relates to the ground state electron configuration and how we can use both of those pieces of information to construct an explanation of why certain atoms exhibit common bonding modalities. In other words, why does nitrogen, for example, commonly form three bonds in stable, neutrally charged molecules? I want to show you how we can take the information that we get from the photoelectron spectroscopy experiment and use that to construct the ground state electron configuration of an atom, what that means, and how this information can help us to provide an explanation for the common bonding modalities that we see for specific atoms. In other words, the common number of bonds that we observe for atoms and molecules. I want to focus in on nitrogen for this example. We know that we observe nitrogen forming three bonds in stable molecules that are not charged. So the question is, how can we take this data, construct this for nitrogen, and then provide an explanation for why nitrogen tends to form three bonds in stable molecules? So first thing I want to do here is I'm just going to sketch the photoelectron spectrum, simulated spectrum for nitrogen. So here I have the simulated spectrum for nitrogen. And let me label each of these peaks we observe. Of course we have, in how I have it drawn, the ionization energy on the y-axis and the number of electrons or the peak height on the x-axis. This peak here represents the ionization of the n equals one shell electrons. And there are two electrons in that n equals one shell. These peaks here represent the ionization of the n equals two shell electrons. And we see that the photoelectron spectroscopy experiment reveals that these electrons come in two subshells. One holds two electrons, and in this case the remaining three occupy the second subshell slightly higher in energy. We have labels for these subshells. We call the subshells that have a maximum occupancy of two S subshells. So that peak represents electrons in an S subshell, in the N equals one shell. This is two electrons in this S, S subshell, in the N equals two shell. And we label this subshell the P subshell. It has a maximum occupancy of six, but in nitrogen there are only three remaining elect electrons after these two subshells are filled. So we can express this information as the ground state electron configuration for nitrogen. And I'm going to write it left to right in the following way, 1s2, where 1, the number in front here, represents the shell number of those electrons. S represents the subshell, and 2 represents the number of electrons in that subshell as a superscript after the subshell label. I can do this in, in order of increasing energy now. So I'll go to the next subshell, be 2s2, followed by 2p3, the occupancy of the p subshell in nitrogen. This represents the lowest energy configuration of the electrons in nitrogen. And I can actually take these electrons and group them into two groups based on something very important that is observed in the photoelectron spectrum. And that is this large energy gap here. This large energy gap implies that the electrons that occupy the n equals one shell spend most of their time much closer to the nucleus on average than the electrons in the n equals two shell. They spend much more time closer to the core of the atom. So we're gonna label these two electrons in nitrogen core electrons. It turns out that because the core electrons spend so much time much closer to the nucleus, they are not particularly accessible to interact with other atoms in the formation of covalent bonds. So simply put, they are not 
something we have to take into consideration when, wanting, when we want to explain the number of bonds that nitrogen forms. These electrons are different. These are referred to as valence electrons and they spend much more time further away from the nucleus and are accessible to other atoms to form covalent bonds. So therefore, we have to take into account the number of valence electrons when we want to build an explanation for the number of bonds that an atom forms. So let's rewrite this in a way that kind of segregates the core and valence electrons. What I'm going to do is I'm going to represent the core electrons with the noble gas symbol that sums up all of them in one symbol. In this case, it would be helium, which has a filled n equals 1 shell. And then I'll just write the rest of the shell subshell information for the valence electrons like that. This would be the shorthand notation for the electron configuration of nitrogen, which indicates the core electrons and the valence electrons. So I've written here the ground state electron configuration for nitrogen and also a section of the periodic table marching across period two from carbon to neon to illustrate now how we can describe why nitrogen tends to form three bonds in stable molecules and also common on carbon, oxygen, and fluorine. So if we take a look at the number of valence electrons in each of these atoms, turns out that carbon has four, nitrogen as we just saw has five, oxygen six, fluorine seven. The valency or the observed number of bonds that each of these atoms forms is related to the valence electrons in an interesting pattern. The valency for carbon is four, tends to form four bonds, nitrogen three, oxygen two, and fluorine one. Notice the pattern. The valence electrons plus the valency or number of bonds that the atom tends to form sums to eight, which is the occupancy of the shell that is being filled as I move across from carbon to nitrogen to oxygen to fluorine to neon, which has a filled n equals two shell. This idea that the number of valence electrons plus the number of bonds that the atom tends to form is referred to often as the octet rule. It's actually a horrible name because the rule only tends to apply to these four atoms and all the other atoms below these on the periodic table are often seen violating this rule. But the rule holds pretty true for most atoms 90% of the time and pretty much 100% of the time for these atoms here. Okay, so we know nitrogen has five valence electrons and has a valency of three, meaning that we observe it commonly forming three bonds. So let's symbolically write the symbol of nitrogen to show this. So nitrogen has five valence electrons. I'm gonna represent those electrons as dots around the nitrogen atom. So I'm going to put them in the four corners here. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to pair two of them in this kind of four corner procedure. Kind of represents spin pairing there. And we can see from this symbolic notation that nitrogen can delocalize or form a covalent bond with this electron, this electron, and this electron. And in essence, it can then have a complete shell which satisfies its valency. And I'm going to redraw this symbol now for nitrogen to show this. Put the electrons around it. I'm going to bond it to some hydrogens actually. Hydrogen we know only forms one bond and has one valence electron. There's the valence electron from that hydrogen. There's a valence electron from that hydrogen. And there it is from that hydrogen. So I can see that around the nitrogen now, through this delocalization of these electrons or the formation of these covalent bonds, the nitrogen in essence achieves a filled shell through the sharing of electrons.
Actually, hydrogen also achieves a filled shell for the N equals one shell, which is the reason why we only observe hydrogen forming one bond, this one too, and this one as well. These electrons here we refer to as lone pair, or sometimes they're also referred to as non-bonding electrons because they're not involved in the covalent bonds of other atoms. And so they will stay represented as dots. I'm going to redraw this molecule now, which is NH3. And I'm going to make the bonding electrons pairs lines. Put the lone pair electrons in the nitrogen here. And this now represents the structure accounting for all the electrons, bonding and non-bonding, for NH3. And through the use of photoelectron spectroscopy and the ground state electron configuration, we now have an explanation for why nitrogen tends to form three bonds in stable molecules.